Opening bands, same as last game. Uh, purple heroes not in fashion, apparently, as the Darkseer and the Void will get taken out of the Darkseer Dark is interesting, because usually you'll just see if somebody picks up a Darkseer as their first pick, you can just answer back with an Oracle for the second. It means that friends are really uncomfortable but playing it's a, Oracle. But it's a cold I, comfort pick, though. Yeah, that's, I think it, that's the bigger reason. It's a cold comfort pick, and I don't actually think... Like, uh, the Darkseer, especially on the Dire side, um, can, can jungle so sure. effectively, can get that level 3 and 4 so fast, and then just come right back to lane. Uh, it doesn't... I don't know, the Oracle counter to the Darkseer here is not as big a deal as some people make it out to be. It's certainly still something you want to consider. It's a lane counter for sure, but it doesn't stop the Darkseer from farming. Right. Sure. So you need another hero that's going to be able to either abuse the jungle just as much or pressure another lane somehow. And I feel like that's, you know, you, again, you're reacting to the Darkseer pick. It's not the it's not the other way around. And I feel like the more reactionary you have to play around your opponent, the, the worse you are mentally, because then you're just saying, okay, well now we need to do all this stuff just to play our own game, where you want to come into a lineup and say, this is our plan, come at us, you know what I mean? I definitely understand that, but we are talking first phase bans here, so it's kind of like what pieces are left in play. We're seeing the Elder Titan does get banned out, but uh, there are still plenty of great options in the pool. The Drow Ranger is the option for complexity, leaving plenty of different things. The, the Riki and Bounty that we've been seeing banned Wisp. out, at least in the last series, the Wisp is on the table, yeah, and of course, but... Mr. Eridar, the Shadow Demon. I mean, you had to you had to see it coming, that that hero has been doing so much work in this tournament mm -hmm. so far. And it's and it's obviously something that Cole is, is having trouble dealing with. A lot of teams are having trouble dealing with it. It's just going to be one of those things where eventually they're going to get fed up and they're just going to start banning it or they're going to figure out like the best way to deal with it. And honestly, I want to go back to the last series when we saw like the Batrider Ogre composition and how effective that was at just right. stopping the two defensive supports from being able to do anything because yeah. you just, you know, Shadow Demon and Dazzle delay deaths. They just stop them from happening at a sooner point, well, which means that if you can continue moving forward and just running at them, eventually there's not much they can do. I don't know how much you can draw from that game about the Shadow Demon in particular, because again, in that game, he was paired with another support that was very, very defensive in True. nature. Um, and it didn't really, that's the other thing, that when you when you pair him with a Wisp, that's technically a defensive support, but it's also a support that can really put another member of your team on steroids, right? Yeah. The, the Dazzle doesn't necessarily do that. No, I, I agree with that point. I just mean, like, in general, against this type of hero, you want to be able to just continue pursuit. That's the most important thing, like being able to close the gap. We talk about it all the time with heroes like Drill. Clearly ban this game, but it's just a, an example. of You want to be able to close the gap all the time and just stay on them. But this is why I like the I, I like the Batrider pick here that, you know, even with the disruption potentially countering the lasso, uh, you've got, you know, that disrupted target is going to be all over Firefly. You're still going to be taking damage when you come out of that disruption. And this is another thing. Another nice thing about the drums build is people have started going drums. Moon started going drums. Uh, on Batrider when there were natural lasso counters in the game. And with that build, you're not as all in on yeah. that blink lasso I mean, initiation. There's sometimes where you don't even skill lasso until like level eight. Right. Like you can obviously, it's not a one button hero. This hero can absolutely do things with his other three skill set as long as he just stays in the fight, stays mobile, stays active. But we're going to be seeing the, the classic duo here, Shadow Demon Marana. So no matter if this plays a support or more likely the core, it's still going to be a threatening presence, whether Shadow Demon has to rotate to set up the Mirana, or she d he does it naturally in the same lane. Yeah, I think it's probably just going to be mid Mirana again on G, yeah. and then the Shadow Demon can come in for a disruption if they feel like they can get a kill. Sure. And I, I do think that there's going to be a little bit more emphasis on rotations this game, just because mm -hmm. if you're putting G in an unfavorable matchup, because Bat versus Mirana, a lot of mid wards for sure. Yeah, I, I'm assuming Limp plays Bat here. Nahas, is that correct? Uh, no, it, it'll either be Limp or Swindles, and actually it's, it's probably Swindles a little bit more often. They, they don't feel, like the mid bat so much? Uh, they like it, but uh, they feel, Kyle and Zach feel super, super confident uh, contesting in a dueling with these two heroes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the one thing that I wanted to go back to towards the kind of the way Complexity used to play before Iron Talon, before all the nerfs to heroes like Earth Spirit and Tuskar. But one of the Complexity's greatest strengths as a team, I feel, lies in those brothers. The fact that they yep. can collaborate so well in dueling composition. And, and that was kind of true to a lesser extent for the Swedes, where well, they got, would yeah, work you together got, as well. You got two pairs of brothers on the team, and you got a guy in uh, in Simon and Hanskin that's very, very comfortable uh, laning with either Limp or Chessy. So that's that's generally a default lane configuration that I'm going to go back to, okay. is is the two brothers together and then Hanskin with one of the yeah. Swedes. So when I was trying to prep for that, uh, when I was doing coaching, I really was looking for the combos that Z Freak as well as Swindles could bring yep. to bear against yep. you. And, and things like the Darkseer or Spirit was definitely a 
I'm towards the top of the list. But so. the nice thing about this is that uh, the thing I like about this kind of an open, especially on the dire side, is it gives you the option to contest in a very aggressive dual lane. But if they pick like a safe lane trial lane, if they pick like a super defensive safe lane trial lane, you always have the option of Iron Talon jungling. Iron Talon jungling Batrider is actually yeah. pretty fast. Sure. But what, do the, what about the arrows? Do you think that's going to be an issue this game? Do they have to be worried about just essentially a team fight being automatically won by G, either getting a good arrow or just being set up for I mean, it, it happened but in the last game. It did, but you can always... The, the thing about this is this is early enough in the draft where you can also you can always draft cleanse. You can yeah, I mean, you an can... LC or something of that nature. Uh, complexity actually run LC more than most teams, now yep. that I think about it. I mean, I like that hero a lot, actually. Now, not necessarily against stuff like Shadow Demon and Dazzle, but just in general, I feel like people really haven't found how useful the hero can be, but... <laughs> That's third pick here. Chug was banned. I like that a lot, actually. I think Juggernaut's one of the stronger cores against any kind of, like, mid-farming uh, Marana. Yeah. And, and just the tendency of picking high magical damage bursts and stuff and like that. And it's something I like. I like a Juggernaut a lot, in particular, as a third pick, because of the, again, a lot more than I used to because of the option of putting it mid. I think they have to actually pick a core here for complexity. Picking up a support when you really don't know friends' full game plan. Like right now, Shadow Demon Marana tells you very, very little. It tells you a little bit about their tempo, but in the broader scope, you really don't know what friends intend to go with this game plan. And I think that it's better to have a fourth pick support so that you can counteract that. Whether you need an ancient apparition uh, for something like a Huskar or an Alchemist, or you need something like a Winter Wyvern against like a Luna. I feel that they definitely need to just go and kind of play through with their cores and then leave that fourth pick support to uh, play more reactionary. I would agree if it wasn't friends who picked Marana. Right. Because I feel right. like they only have one Marana player. I mean, maybe Aloha Dance plays it, who knows, but yeah. I, I feel like it's like 90% going to be G. So with that being well, said, you kind of already have some semblance of an idea of what the lanes are going to look like, at least to some degree. But what's stopping them from like picking Dazzle Hawker or something like that? Like that's still something that's, you have to yeah. have the answers for, and I guess. they do go for the Oracle anyways. Ooh. So that's cleanse. That's uh, you get arrow, yep. you get false promise. Yep. They definitely need an answer. It's just it is only focusing on this one Murana, whereas there's three picks left in the pool. I mean, there's still a lot of time for adjustment. Yeah. I wouldn't hate something like Slardar again. I feel like it was... Now, this is this is where you're really you're really hoping, I think, as Cole, that Friends drafts another hard support here. Because if they do, that's when you can come back with the I Husker. think they're picking their offlaner right now. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, I think drafting a drafting a support here for Friends is very dangerous. Yeah. Oh no, they are going to go another yeah. support. Wow. And, and this is where you, you can come back with the Huskar if you want to. Exciting. So watch this become a Huskar and then not having the reaction. Um, I don't know. This is going to be rough. Like, I think the Dazzle Shadow Demon Murano already gives you just a lot of bread and butter potential to the laning phase. Like, even in their, their match yesterday, the one thing that shined was the fact they had Dazzle, Shadow Demon, and uh, Luna. And they were able to really make that composition work. They even rotated up and helped out a Sand King in, in a situation. So I feel like friends have a lot of uh, kind of potential with these supports as well. Sure. It's something that always want to apply as well as no fear are extremely comfortable with. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not all in on a Huskar pick here, but I think that I think that knowing for the exactly the same reasons that you just articulated, knowing both of uh, the enemy supports when you're making your fourth pick is something I really like. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a Cole Huskar just so we could be tempted to a Yoku Axe as a potential response. I like Yoku Axe a lot. I haven't okay. seen a Yoku Axe. This is something while, since Empire. We've been talking about going back to you for a while. The gyro. It's something we got away from. Um, I think they're fairly confident with it mid as well as safe line. This is a very fight oriented lineup though from Cole. It's not really good at pushing. It's pretty much just fight, fight, fight all the time. Like win your lanes, get lasso pickoffs, and then you push based on um, the idea that you're always able to win the fight. You know what I mean? But but yeah, that's that's why. So I, that's the big thing about the fifth pick is that you have to you have to have something as your fifth pick that can really damage buildings. I still think like Kabexa could go like for a fifth pick alchemist and it would be perfectly fine. That's uh, a Yoku Shaker. That's right? a Yoku Shaker yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah. This is. And he, again, that's that's why I don't really know what to think about that because Yoku in the past has been one of the better offline shaker Sand King players that I've ever seen. But then yesterday had an absolutely brutal match as Sand King. Yeah, that's one true. of the worst I've seen him play. It's hard, to, it's hard to be comfortable, confident in him when he's playing like that. But I feel like Earthshaker is easier to 
execute with, like the spell usage, it's not as clear cut. Yeah. You you're not as concerned if you're yeah, you're not you're cooldown. not going to get your blink canceled uh, after channeling ulti like you did yesterday. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely harder to play the Sand King by comparison, but still, I think that's going to have a lot of eyes on him as far as really controlling the the mid game team fights. And again, I don't see any reason why Complexi couldn't just go for an Alchemist for their mid. Yeah, they're going to ban and then, too. Like, what what do you actually do against that? Like, you don't have enough damage from friends. What do we feel about a Morphling here? They banned out the Slark, which is a good ban, obviously against the Bat Rider and avoids a lot of trouble with the Gyrocopter, but... Well, I mean, yeah, Morph's, that's, Morph's all right. I mean, I think you, yeah, you want Luna something Morphling, right? Can, yeah, it's Luna Morph, maybe TB's out. I mean, you want something that you can create illusions of and push. Morph is more Naga. stable than Luna, I think. But if you want to, like, if you're going to five, man, I think Luna's probably better. Naga is okay stopping the Bat Rider lasso or stopping the initiation of Dude, they, they Gyro have, Jink, putting a They have out. saves on saves. Like, they do not need another save. <laughs> yeah. Like, they have Grave, they have Sh uh, Shaker, and Moonlight Shadow At with the Shadow time, Demon. Though. It's like. If that's your approach, you can slow down the end. It's going to be the Morph. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that that was definitely the best pick. Uh, they definitely. I mean, there are some weak drawbacks to it. Fate Seed, it can be a very quick reaction to save somebody from, like, an E Blade, which I do think this is going to be E Blade game. It's not going to be Envy's full right click build, which I'm glad it's back, but just no, no, suit that, the lineup here. I mean, that, that right click build, I don't know if you heard when we were talking about it on the panel earlier, mm -hmm. that. Uh, because he had that right that right click stats focus build, like the Shatter Demon, the Shatter Demon illusions and his replicate of the Shatter Demon illusion Demon illusions just did a ridiculous oh, yeah. amount of work. Definitely. There's the other thing too that. is E Blade's not that good against Oracle. Exactly. That's one of the other things that I feel like. Uh, and there's the TA again. Yeah. Okay. I like the TA for Cole. It's a, again, it's a Roshan killer. It's a building hitter, and they needed one. So I think it's probably one of the better picks they could have had in the situation. All that considered. Oh, friends do have damage issues this game, but I feel like it's it's another one of those situations where if they draw it out, they'll probably have the mid to late game advantage. Oh, with a Morphling, certainly. Yeah, I, I just think the complexity are, they're putting themselves under the gun, but if they execute and they don't make the same mistakes as in game one, I think they should be able to tie it up. Right. I mean, that's I, I agree with that completely. This is what I keep telling the team, that we know what our issues are. We know what the mistakes are that are being made. If you fix them, you win, period. Definitely. Yeah. I think it definitely comes down to their rebound, uh, how they kind of shape up from game one. They're, they're not yeah, still yelling in each other's ears about whatever happened uh, half an hour ago. They need to really focus on this game, and I th think that Complexity have the wherewithal to take it away. All right, guys. Complexity fighting for their tournament lives here in game two, needing a win to push this best of three series to a third game. Let's throw it over our casters. d, &D. All right, Draskal. It's do or die for Complexity. They lose this. They're out of the tournament, and uh, people... Praising them and hoping that they're going to do well on the wild card could be a bit nervous for them. Do you think that they'll be able to stay alive here, or are friends going to be able to pull out a bit of an upset and knock out the Cole boys? I mean, I'm liking their lineup a little bit more than friends right now, but you know, in the previous game, I saw a lot of things that Complexity were doing that I didn't feel like were necessarily strong plays or individually. Even I felt like it was a bit shaky. So if they can kind of, you know, get get into ship shape over the last what 20 minutes that it's been since we saw them play last, then maybe. <laughs> But we'll, we'll have, have to, to see. see. <laughs> Ditto. Well, mid lane, it looks like they uh, did drop the early ward on the side of friends, so they've already spotted out the early mid lane cold ward. So it's something they will be able to get rid of. So a nice little early nod for friends on that one. But they are not feeling uh, too rambunctious at the you know lead off of the gate of this game. So it looks like they'll be able to secure the bottom mid for themselves. Top will go the way of Cole. And I don't imagine we're going to have really any funny business as far as the laning goes here. Things seem pretty cut and dry as far as the matchups they want to go for or do you think it would be in the best interest for any sort of audible i imagine that's not the case though <laughs> not by not i think that complexity are looking at this and they're saying okay you've got an offline shaker that hero is not really going to be able to find a whole heck of a lot and if yoku can't really get anything out of the, the early laning phase then it's slowing the pace of friends lineup and against a team with a gyro a bat rider you know the mid game timings of like a z freaks earth spear and whatnot they have a tremendous amount of damage and team fight that i think is going to just hit their timing faster than what friends have that's why i'm kind of favoring them at least in terms oh, of oh my god he turned around and just didn't hit the courier that, that was, was really weird he his eyes were probably all focused in on limp and zoning him back he's like what the hell is that courier doing there but yeah they are going to still be able to take down that ward and uh well here comes some outside interference at z freak to make it a two on two in the mid lane here just kind of telling always won't fly step off step off obviously friends want they always like friends slash virtus pro slash a team with g on it they always they
they always like to surround G, kind of in the same sense that Navi likes to do it for Dendi. They reserve his picks for the end so they can give him the best matchup possible, and if they feel like it could be an unfavored matchup, they'll make sure that he gets a good head start. Well, they probably just assumed that Z-Freak was going to be moving around during the early game. Like, Oracle's not known for being that much of a rotation hero. Roll's going to miss here. But yeah, most of the time, Oracle just soaks poles. You know, he zones the offlaner for something like a Darkseer. Obviously, not in this game, but... That means that there's really only one moving part on Cole, at least for the early game. And it just ensures by having the Shadow Demon mid that G doesn't have any needless deaths. Swindles straight to the jungle. That Iron Talon Batrider, probably uh, his better play. Mid lane, oh, Lip, he's gone. Dear. Got caught out. It looks like a disruption set the thing up and with an arrow on top of it, really nowhere to run. And even if Z-Freak was around, there's not much he could do to bail him out. So I mean, he start. left and the second he left, he got disrupt arrowed. That was very nice timing there from friends. And this is the hero last game that we were looking to and saying, look, Limp's the guy who's doing all the heavy lifting. So I feel like to a degree, he, he probably won't have to do as much because he has that gyro core that's going to have really big teamfight impact. But you certainly don't want him to have a bad early game. Meanwhile, as we saw up there, Yoku pulling out an old favorite that we've got to see him play a lot in his days in Empire in the offlane Earthshaker here. So obviously he knows he's not going to be able to get a lot in the lane. He's not sacrificing it for an Iron Talon jungle situation. So Yoku's build up will be a bit slow, obviously in comparison to something like Swindle's Batrider in the offlane game. But you know, Oracle, you know, he's moving around right early. He's got the haste rune here. And uh, it's just kind of being a babysitter for Limp, it looks like. They don't want any more of this disruption arrow funny business. Yeah, again, it's you got to keep your mid players safe. Like these two guys are going to deal a huge chunk of damage during the mid game. It's kind of funny because Dota's kind of deviated to this point where we're seeing a lot of just supports that are purely defensive mm -hmm. and then huge hard hitting cores. And that's pretty much what friends have done both games, right? Yeah. Like they pick defensive supports, hard hitting cores, we just fight around them. It's funny though, you get these defensive supports, but they're the ones getting the kills. And when you have teams like Cole and some others who still opt for like the Earth Spirits and a lot more offensive supports, they end up being a little lackluster in the early game. Do you have those moments to shine like we saw in game number one when the Magnetize comes in order and you have a great initiation and a way to kind of put out that damage and, and really get the most out of it. But, you know, in the early game, I'm st we still haven't been able to see him really succeed too much. And you yeah. know, you have a way to farm and you're just kind of, you know, walking around and hoping that you can make some sort of setup play. But that's the big issue, right? It's like when you have those heroes that have limited options, that's what makes Shadow Demon such a high priority pick because he doesn't have to necessarily kill. He doesn't have to necessarily just defend. He can do both yeah. as long as you have another hero who partners well with him. It's the whole package. He even yeah. scales wonderfully in the late game. You got Purge, he's the best. I think he's the best scaling support in the game, actually. Yeah. Yeah, two, three of his abilities easily are just effective throughout the whole game, for yeah. sure. And even Poison, it's like great for clearing out waves. So he is a serious Swiss Army knife here. But uh, he'll trade blows with Z-Freak, who does manage to catch two with the Boulder Smash. But now they set up the disruption play. Always want to fly, going to get jumped on now as Limit the rotation over. And Cole will get themselves on the board one to one. But quickly, friends will get their own responses. They are able to take down oh. the Pesky Little Oracle. Leap up and oh. over. It's on the other side of the Fissure, but it may not matter. One more right click. Boom. He'll get it done. G says, I don't care if I'm locked in place. I'll get that kill. Meanwhile, on the other side, they're making a move for Limp here. At least just no fear is. Body Slows blocks. him down with the early poison touch and the body block, but not going to be enough to uh, deter them. Or will it? They actually get the fissure connection. Oh Starfall, and they got Limp down. Triple kill for G they're already. Another and one. they are not done yet. They set up a disruption. They're going to be moving on forward, and they'll get the kill on Hanskin. No ultra kill, unfortunately, for G. But my god, friends are really opening things up in the late days. That was actually insane. Like oh. every single hero on Friends was there except for the Morphling. Like it was, it was just four heroes. They they committed so hard in rotating for those runes and making sure that complexity weren't going to be able to, you know, establish that mid lane control that they were looking for. And they were just on point, ready to go. Two games straight, you know, Yoku not getting a lot in the laning stage, so he finds his own presence elsewhere and yep. you know gets his hands dirty and reaps in the benefits now. It just seems like Complexity weren't really prepared for that much of a commitment. Are they losing? I don't think they're oh, prepared for God, this either. Wizard. Hi, how you doing? Disruption. Z-Freak, though, finds the that, window to be able to roll out to safety. That fissure was awful. <laughs> he fissured like a full second before that disruption ended. That was uh, optimistic, but yeah. I mean, it would have been a kill, I think, if he, if he didn't miss that fissure, but, you know, it happens. He's still four kills up. Yeah. And Z-Freak still has to walk all the way back to the fountain and then come back out and maybe spend the money for a TP, let's say. So, not the worst thing in the world for friends, but... You know. That Dazzle's level 5 at 5 minutes! What is happening right now? Friends! They are friends, you can tell, because they are just grouping up instantly in this game. Like, you know what? Aloha Dance is free farming, we're okay with that. 
we're just gonna casually help G get like what? Does he have like four of the kills right now for his team? I want to say. Definitely yeah. has at least three. He has four. Top tower. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a Marana. She is good, but feels like in almost all aspects of the game, early, mid, and can be a problem in the late game too. So. No quiet period for her. But what is the best thing going for Cole right now? Is it the fact that Chessie has been able to kind of free farm in this top lane on his gyro? Yeah. And Swindle also has been off the map kind of just grinding the way on his bat rider for a while there. So the bat is definitely the, the shining layer right now for Cole because mm -hmm. he's gotten a lot. You know, he's level seven already. He's got his uh, Iron Talon jungling thing going on. He's just being, you know, he's trying to get to the blink as fast as humanly possible. And similar to game one where the axe wanted the blink timing really quickly and he kind of didn't hit it because he went to fight too early. Swindles isn't doing the same thing. He's saying, look, I'm going to make sure I get my item before I start coming to these fights. And that way, when I'm there, I know that I can maybe get a, you know, a priority pick off and we can try to make something happen from that. Because right now, it's not really looking so hot in the early game for complexity outside of those two heroes getting farmed. Speaking of farm, what about how complex you should, you know, delegate the the like ancient farm here? Is this something you want to make sure your TA gets the boost up or gyrocopter to kind of secure things? The TA is really the one who kills it because yeah. the TA can kind of kite it out and doesn't have to rely on a long cooldown like flat cannon. Oh man, is he just dead? Looks like a disruptive soul catcher combo. And uh, okay, whoa, he like disappeared. He got yeah, just straight up decimated. That soul catcher with the wave just gone. Yeah, it was a waveform as well on top of that, so it's just insane amounts of damage. Dang. Okay. And skin. skin. And dead. Fissure. He's dead for sure. All right. My goodness. Friends opening up opportunities across the map all together. Complexity kind of getting a bit... Well, Swindle. Here we go. Mid lane. They make a jump roll through. They will be able to get the response. Taking down Yoku on the back end of that. Did have to commit the gyro rotation and the ulti, but by now, normally, that's when gyro does make those, you know, rotations when the cooldown comes online. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of this is just a matter of you know, Swindles, we uh, we talked about he wasn't really trying to move around that much during the super early laning phase. Oh, he misses the wave. That was definitely a kill but there. But G's right there waiting for him. How's it going? Oh, okay. Well, the golem is going to be the one to catch him on the chin and take him out of his misery. So, yeah, that was a nice play. Cole, get that one. But friends are definitely putting the pedal to the metal and making Cole be the ones to respond. I mean, Cole can still pull it back, though. I mean, now the cooldown's online. They have a lot of... Team fight AOE, you know, Z Freak hits level six. They have a tremendous amount of damage output. They can probably just win the fights based on that alone, assuming the initiation goes favorably for them. But that's one big difference between this and the last game is the Batrider's initiation is not really like, it's not like an axe, where when the axe goes in, you're pretty much like hitting multiple targets. The bat can only pull out one. And like we talked about, there's three saves. So they, they can either throw out a fissure, they can get disrupted, there can be a grave or whatever, and it kind of draws the yeah. fight out a bit. So it's, it seems like it's going to be a hard game for him. Wait, he, did he spend his... Oh, he died to neutrals, never mind. I was going to say, did he spend his money because he lost a bit? But yeah, he did just... Uh, they just signed. I think he also bought a stick after that. You're right, though. I mean, a, a lasso back, a disruption like that one leads to heal bomb, grave save, and suddenly the fight could be just 180. So it is going to be tough for Cole. It's not as cut and dry as just blinking and getting lasso and getting a kill. Mid lane, though. Here's a skirmish. Boom! They're going to quickly blow up and take out the Shadow Demon here. Cole on the run back. Look to go for No Fear. No Fear, though, is going to try to valiantly go for the Great TP. He gets... Flame breaked. Still alive. Oh my god. Monster one. Oh. <laughs> Creep. He. Oh. Go. They get him. All right. Last chuckle going the way of friends on that one. But uh, it looks like Cole is still going to be doing work here. Over on the other side, they make the catch to take down Yoku. G tries to go for the leap, but he is oh so slow. Can't run it out. And uh, with the leap on cooldown now, he's going to be soon to be dead here. Unless Always Wanna Fly can do something to stop him. Gets off the disruption. The trap's going to be popped. And they will be able to side blade him down. And Always Wanna twice. Fly also is going to be dropped. That is two times he's taken down. Lip now going to be the one to get the triple kill. And suddenly Cole taking the game right back. What is happening in this game? It is. It, I want some Benny Hill music. Honestly, and the, he solo killed a morphling. Okay, well, Swindle gets the job done in the bottom lane. I assume the lasso and everything was committed for it, but morphling goes down. Maybe caught him out when he had a high agility or something. But there's no way a morphling should by ever die like distracted that. by all the mid lane action. It, yeah. it's, it's hard to say, but that is actually ridiculous that you can die like that. That, that should never happen. Okay, so uh, Cole's back in the game. Eight eight. <laughs> I mean, that's that they're just back in the game now. That's yeah. it. All that work that friends put in the early game, pulling up and ahead like five to one, and the, the, the triple kill for G is unfortunately going to be kind of casted aside now. Because we by Kohler, they're hitting their stride, right? Like we talked about the timings of the early game and why we were favoring them so much for the first like you know 20 to 30 minutes, and just saying, look, they have tremendous amounts of damage. AOE team fight, they're going to run at you. You know, they're going to just drop their spells, and heroes are going to die. I mean, it was a little bit strange because 
the first thing that happened in the fight mid was friends lost two supports and then Dying yoku's just sitting there like just sitting mid yeah throwing out casual fissures onto the creep wave full well knowing that the rest of complexity was chasing down two of their supports and then they die and then the shadow demon revives tries to save g and then he dies and it's like the save your buddy syndrome like i know your team name is friends yeah. and you don't want them to die yeah, but your domino effect yeah. is just not helping the case at all and you're handing over one by one to complexity at this point so you've got them back in the game but here's the response from friends now fissure catches swindle on one side g makes the move from the other and with the heal with the arrow with the star storm it's going to be enough to take down the bat rider and get a little bit of vengeance back their way they'll be able to turn this into what looks like a tier one push so things getting back in order for friends but Cole not, you know, doing it without anything at all. It looks like they've had some pressure in the mid lane and might even make a push towards the bottom. Oh, this are making some kind of response. Not just going to take that one on the chin. Uh, I think that friends will be able to TP in time. Yeah, they're coming down to the bottom lane, anticipating that a jump could be made here for Aloha Dance. Are they going to try to bait something now? We'll have to see. Everyone's getting uh, all hands on deck from friends for this, it looks like. That's a really but, scary place to be. I mean, yeah. they can't Moonlight Shadow, though, because the Morphling's hitting the creeps. So they have to push the wave out and then Moonlight Shadow if they were going to try to go aggressive. Otherwise, it's super obvious. By now, Cole has got to be like, hmm, there's no one else yeah. on the map anywhere. That's weird. What are friends doing? I don't know if we want to jump this Morphling, who is confidently getting CS in the lane. <laughs> yeah, it's super obvious. They know that friends are there, of course. This is KD Smoke. So fishy. But uh, Cole say, we'll see you and your creepy play, and we'll try to be creepers ourselves and sneak in from behind with the smoke. They lead out the way with a little little shadow priest to kind of spot everything out. And uh, now is going to be the Moonlight Shadow here and make their move in. Swindle's going to get caught from the Fissure. Are they going to look to burst down the bat before we get anything off? There is a Star Storm as they're still caught on the other side. Aloha Dance commits it with the wave. And now he could be the one in trouble here. He's trying to morph his way, get all that strength in. They lasso him up. They pull him back, and the morph goes down a little uh, ahead of the game right there to make that kind of commitment while up on the other side. Jesse actually turns into a killing spree. He's going to quickly decimate and take out G. Crumbling now. It's going to be friends. Is no fear also going to get trekked down. And suddenly Cole just easily take over this tier one in the bottom lane and look for any sort of survivors. Yoku's still there, so Hanskin's going to burst him down and secure himself a double kill for drop dead on the side of friends. That was such a misplay by Aloha Dance. Like, there's no way you're ever killing the bat like that. They know that there's an Oracle on the other other side, so by committing that heavily and waveforming into a hero who can lasso you, like, the, the, the false promise came out before he even waveformed. So I don't know what he was doing. He was isolated from his team. The rest of friends were kind of sitting under the tower. I think this is just attributed to a breakdown in communication, like friends not being on the same page and saying, okay, we got the Fissure and the Demonic Purge and the Bat, but he's got drums. You know, he's a little bit tankier. We're probably not going to be able to burst him. Let's just back up, you know, because he doesn't have Blink. How else are they going to start the fight? It's pretty much like friends have to go in on them yeah. in order for complexity to take the engagement. That's pretty much what happened. So for the next couple of fights, they need to play around their defensive utility and not try to just go YOLO on a hero when there's an Oracle save. Yeah, not everyone can waveform dash like that. I think G yeah. already used his leap and we didn't get to see much of it, but I believe the gyrocopter might have been like the, the bouncer there and was like dropping a call down, dropping like, don't do not pass. Do not try to help your morphling. And uh, bottom lane, G's in trouble. He went down in that previous skirmish, and it looks like they might be able to catch him out again. And uh, that will be the case. Burnt to a crisp. Lady Marana goes down, and Cole enhanced their lead even further. Now 13 to 9. Net worth top two both belong to them, with the TA really kind of hitting her stride. And uh, with that, Colt can easily move into the pit and grab the Aegis here. What a fortuitous DD rune as well. This is going to be dead before they're even ready to fight. Like, they can't do anything without Murano. They're just going to counter pressure the lanes as much as they can. Yeah. So when Complexity get this Aegis, they're going to have to TP back and push out lanes instead of go for an objective straight up, which is the right play. It's just unfortunate that G's died so many times. Like, these types of games where you delay the Aghanim so much on the Murano, Sure, she's going to start getting a lot of farm once it's done, but he is so close and he's died, what, three times now? Mm -hmm. It's just really, really painful because during these fights, you know, say he has Aghanims when they jump Swindle instead, maybe he dies, you know, instead of gets saved by the Oracle because he gets bursted so heavily. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I guess the next kind of shining hope here is Yoku's Blink, which he's very close. less than 100 from yeah. 50 about. So they will have that, which does kind of really increase the high ground game of friends as well in case this game does proceed in the favor of Cole. At least friends will have some sort of good way to kind of be the gatekeepers in their own base. But It's always the ace in the hole, right? Like the yeah. big echo. Yeah. Sometimes you get a little bit overconfident, you maybe get a kill, and you're like, all right, let's go, let's go, and then boom, three-man echo, four-man echo, whatever, and the, the fight is already just kind of turned on its head from that point. So 
it's a lot of uh, a lot of pressure though on the Earthshaker to be able to make that kind of stuff happen. Yeah, this is all part of it, friends. What could be considered maybe their plan B, being able to stall things out and hope that the morph could be the, the yeah. one true hope for them. I mean, now with wave clear on their side, we're having the Marana Ags. We already mentioned the the echo capability to kind of prevent Cole from easily making moves into the base while the echo is up. Uh, that might be what they have to hope for here. And, and with that, it means that Cole can begin to use his Aegis by pushing forward, taking the rest of the tier ones down. Um, We'll have to see if friends are going to be a bit more submissive at this point out, or, I don't know, could get caught like this. Aloha Dance will get to pull back to set the replicate here, but they're going to try to lock him in place. There's the stun, there's the silence. Can they do enough work? And Waveform will allow him a little bit of room to get away here. Gets up the adaptive strike. It's great to be committed. That is the Yoku Blink and the stomp. It's on Chessy. He's doing a lot of damage, even though the false promise is there. Can they heal him enough in time so he doesn't get bursted down? It looks like he is going to be good, and we'll make it back out to safety. So the one Morphling drop is... Very nice for complexity here, and they'll get the follow-up taking down the Shadow Demon, so... Things might be going from bad to worse for friends at this rate, because now we have no Echo, and Cole can just continue to ramp things up on their objective path. These are really disjointed fights for friends again. It's like everyone's standing on like the opposite side of the lane from each other, so they're... I mean, the Grave came in eventually, but by that point, Aloha Dance had already taken like a ridiculous amount of damage, and he was just in no man's land, pretty much, at the start of it, so... From knowing... downtown! I mean, knowing that push was coming, I don't... Oh! Okay. Oh! Hello, how you doing? Leap in, the mighty Star Storm leads to a Rocket Barrage, which actually almost takes G out, but he gets the Grave to keep him alive and well, and Limp's Refraction also keeps him good. Could have been almost a two-man hit job right there, but Cole will be able to shake it off and just kind of accept the one Oracle takedown. But that's just the showcase of the Marana Burst, right? Yeah. That's just friends saying, hey, we still got fight. Yeah. But that's going to be something, you know, during the mid game that might not be as effective as it was before because BKBs are very common purchases on the, the Gyro and the TA, especially against this lineup in particular. Oh, yeah. In the first game, the Slardar was an issue because even if you buy BKB against that hero, you're still going to get amped. The Soul Catcher damage and the right click from the draw was always going to be a problem for Limp. So it was much harder to itemize. But in this game, it's easy because they're all spell casting heroes except for the Morphling's right click. That is the only physical damage that you need to worry about. So buying an early BKB is fine. And then all of a sudden, okay, my Shaker Echo is not really going to be effective. The double slash quad star storm, whatever you want to call it. G could be dead here again. Yeah, Z Freak is actually doing a nice job. He's getting the most of that silence timing and then waits and then does the boulder smash to lock him down with the stun. And with the, you know, Magnetite just continuing to tick on through. They save him in the meantime with the Grave, but that is not going to be enough. He ends up going down. They'll lose a second. Is the Dazzle also going to be dropped? Cool on the turnaround here. Z Freak is still fine. We'll be able to live and walk away. And in the meantime, Chessie will be able to get the finish, taking out Yoku on this one. So another big fight for complexity here. Very hungry to get the little support when they could double back and just get the clean finish of the tier two. But they know they got this kill and they will secure it for all day. We'll drop from the side of friends. Complexity will all stand strong and they'll be able to fall with the tier two takedown. And yeah, Morphling is trying his best to kind of split the rest of the map in the meantime. Yeah, Complexity's tempo is just too fast. Their heroes hit their timing before, you know, the Morphling still can't do anything. Like, Aloha Dance has died way too much on his hero already, and Morphling is notorious for not really being fight capable at a very early stage. Like, he has a perseverance for crying out loud. Jeez. Like, I mean, he did just buy his ultimate orb, so that's fine, but, like, just having a Lincoln's, that's just step one of that yeah. long book of steps for Morphling, usually. it's He's got a journey ahead of him. It really looked nice for friends in the early game because they were getting a lot of these kills, but this just goes to show again why we were favoring Complexity's draft so much is just because of the the capabilities they have of fighting and what friends can realistically do with their lineup. It's pretty one-dimensional. It's like, okay, we're going to let the Morphling farm and uh, we're going to make illusions out of them. And then at that point, if we, yeah. we have nothing but defensive heroes. So making plays on the map for them is very difficult prior to Yoku having Blink. And even with it, due to the, the way the game's been going, it's much harder to utilize even that item, because what if you go aggro and you echo and it doesn't work? We'll find out in just a moment, Draskal, because they're going on the aggressive. There's an echo. It's okay. It actually bursts down Jesse. They'll we'll be able to get the first notch on that one, but the rest of Cole might consider pulling on out. But hey, Swindles is flirting around here saying, maybe we can make something happen, but he gets quickly purged and they decide it is in their best interest to just totally withdraw from that. Yeah, that was a nice kill. The Oracle, where was he? Was he on like the other side of the tower or something? Because I didn't see him. Yeah, it looks like he was a bit out of position. I think he might have had time to get the False Promise off, but it, it was close. He did die pretty quickly, but not being in the position he needed to be, not anticipating the smoke, stuff like that. And I mean, that was a, an offlane tower defense. Maybe Complexity weren't even expecting them to defend that tower. Yeah. It's not really necessarily super high value, but 
getting a, a very high priority kill at the very least. Just feels like again, friends, one of those moves like we're letting complexity know we're still alive and kicking, and uh, you know even a tier one is not going to be safe. Yoku is just like down. next time. That's five heroes. Remember that. Remember. Be on your way. Here they come in their top lane approach though, and uh, you know for the sake of the Oracle, I saw he did have an Arcanes, but you know I guess if he feels like being out of position could be something of a factor, you could always switch that into an Aether Lens to help a bit in getting that quick false promise of safety, but. Yeah, I like Aether Lens on uh, Oracle a lot, actually. Yeah, it's great. It's like the same thing as buying it on like a bad end or Omni Knight, right? Oh, yeah. you just you want that little bit of leeway on your spell casting distance. It's very, very helpful. Yeah, it's already actually got some decent range, but you know, same with like Bench. You want to be able to get that extra wiggle room to get that clutch swap, or clutch false promise to get the save in there, and they'll even funnel the tomes his way too, so we can start getting to more levels of moral season. See okay. you later. No fear, no life. He goes down. Quick hit, quick kill, bottom lane. Good succession right there for Cole. Meanwhile, Morphling is going to do some damage on Swindles and quickly piece the hell out and go right back into his own farm ways. I wonder if Aloha Dance does end up going back to the E-Blade this game. I mean, I don't really like it against Oracle so much, but if the Oracle's out of position, it can still work. Yeah. <sighs> Swindles going to get the, the false promise here. Just getting punched a little bit by G. But, you know, friends are still making a game of this. They're splitting up the map fairly well. They're abusing the pushing potential of G. Yeah. And, you know, eventually he gets like a Lincolns or something and a Blink Dagger, and it's going to become a lot harder for him to be picked. And then he just keeps, you know, splitting up the map, splitting up the map, letting the Morphling get more farm. And maybe if Aloha Dance gets one or two more items, or doesn't die horribly, which he might. Yeah, he could. They get a nice grip, and that means he's not going to be going anywhere. Good yeah. quick movement, good quick catch, Cole. Continue their assault. That's morph out for 45 seconds. He does not have a buyback here. Yoku just casually farming out this mid lane. Good quick blink will avoid the trouble from the TA, but sure enough, complexity are going to be moving on forward here in hopes of forcing out that buyback if it was available, or at least just building pressure if they can. Probably overall going to be stalling out for the Roche, I imagine. Yeah, one more minute. it's one minute, so. It's yeah. definitely on the table for them, especially since Lim doesn't have BKB. I think you kind of want that item or an Aegis at least before you start to threaten high ground. Onward for the tier 2 for complexity. We'll have to see. Friends slowing things down. Where's Yoku? He has his Echo Slam here. It's friends after all. We don't know. They could end up defending this tier 2. But nah. with Cole's positioning, they're not going to be clumped up and it would not be in their best interest. Yeah, Morph's not even alive yet. If they're going to defend, they at least need him. And I think it could be a bit wasteful using Echo here when you know that Roshan's going to be up very soon. Because it's a lot easier to get a good Echo in the Roshan pit than it is trying to do this around a concave of a tier 2. But... I say that, they're still going ham. Moonlight Shadow, and now they run right through they're Sentry, spotted. right through an Ops, and, and the pings fly out. And we'll see if Cole just avoid this altogether, or use it as maybe a way to kind of get the jump. It looks like they will do the former. Avoid the trouble of friends, and just kind of not risk getting caught out and bursted down by anything. Yeah, there's no reason to take the risk, because you kill Roshan so easily with Complexity's lineup. If you take the fight, you're running the risk of losing it, and then if you lose it, you delay your own Roshan, which is not good. But when you have TA, you want to abuse that as much as humanly possible, because it's such a low commitment Rosh, you can do it with one hero, as long as you have Desolator, which clearly they do. So the next fight they want to take is either around the Rosh, or force, you know, friends to come to that area and try to fight on their own terms. Did look like it was a band of elf skin there on the morph, so... Doesn't look like an early E-Blade. He might be just going straight for Manta. The, the Manta, yeah. More illusions. It's really it's really good when you don't want to buy BKB. So for example, if the Earth Spirit comes in and he silences you straight up, you want a Manta style to get rid of it or a BKB. But the issue with BKB is that there's still a pretty decent chunk of physical damage scaling and complexity coming out from the TA and, and less so the Gyro. But as the game goes on, you're going to need an answer for that. And yeah. plus the illusions in conjunction with the disruption already is yeah. very I nice. Mean, you will not have that cool Waterman army if you yeah. do not get the Manta. We saw it in the hands of, what, Secret, right? Envy did it. It was just like a ridiculous army of water people. Uh, and we'll have to see if friends will get that benefit or not. Ooh, jump in from nice Z-Freak. Blink. But uh, blink the other way. But Z-Freak on his wrist spirit, he can roll, he can catch. Boulder smash, I don't know, it's too risky. It's a long shot here. Does he want to go for it? It's travel time is way too oh. slow. And on the okay. other side, okay, Limp and Jesse will both be able to quickly take down Aloha Dance. And Morphling, who's just far from home, and who also is getting pulled far from his family. Yoku does get the disruption. 
Any other backup? Does not look like it. Flame Break back into trouble. And it's going to be Limp who picks up that one and secures a monster kill streak. Here comes Cole charging down the mid lane. It's a parade of people as they're going to easily just stampede right over the supports. Always Wanna Fly also going to get dropped. They're going to go for the tier two. They could look to push in, possibly bait up some buybacks if they're even there. Do some work on the tier three and always double back for the Roche. I mean, this is just getting way too out of control. I think Aloha Dance has had a very uncharacteristic game. Like, he's died a ton on a hero that is notorious for being very hard to kill. Like, five deaths on a Morphling in a 25-minute game? That's that's pretty insane. I mean, they're going to get this this racks with relative ease. Shaker is not up for another 10 seconds. They should be able to retreat, no problem. They get the wards down, they get the trap down, just in case, you know, friends want to pursue this. And, you know, ever since... But was it like 10 minutes in, my friends looked pretty solid, and then at that point, Complexity were like, eh, we're kind of just done getting picked off all over the map. We're going to commit as many heroes as you do to all these fights. Our Gyrocopter hits level 6 or 7. Yeah. We're ready to just continue to fight. And that's what we emphasize, too, about their draft, is they want to fight all the time. Now, it's Cole who just totally have the reins of this game, and uh, they'll first things first, they'll, they'll deal with the pressure that's been built up in these side lanes a bit and then get right back on the objective path. Move in, Aegis, and then uh, make their move for the next set of racks here. I mean, friends can stall out. They have fantastic wave clear and can kind of deal with being down a couple of racks or so, but uh, we just question if there is any sort of valiant late game to them because in the meantime, it's just, you know, them being caught out of position, unfortunately, time and time again. So Cole have been really taking advantage of that, but here come friends. They anticipate that Cole is going to be by that Roche pit. They move in. Let's say they move in. They see Cole's not there and Roche is there. Like, I don't know. Can they even do it? Mm. Uh, no, a trap's there too, so probably wouldn't be the best idea. But they obviously are just a bit concerned. Where's Cole at? They're not here. Yeah, so I mean, they're going. They're trying to get swimmed. They the he's, he's a bit too far out. And the second that happens, two... Two TPs come in, and Cole think about maybe making their own move. They see the pitchers down, they want to go for it. Oh, they do get the boulder smash and the grip silence here. They're making a move for always want to fly. It looks like they will be able to get the pesky little shadow demon down. And uh, the rest of Cole are just going to force friends back in away here. How dare you come near our Roche pit? And uh, with that, it seemed like a desperation. Not again. Aloha yeah, dance. Snagged up, taken chance. down. His life is over, and now Complexity can turn this into, oh, hey, we're, we happen to be top lane, we can get these towers. Looks like Chessy finds more value going elsewhere. I don't know, I figured they should either go for Roche or go for towers now. Morphling out for 40 seconds. They can just back. push. I mean, they have BKB and Aegis on TA, so it's not really an issue. They're going for bottom lane. Yeah. It makes sense. I think this game was not a huge outdraft, but a, a fairly sizable one. I don't really see how the Morphling is ever supposed to hit a decent timing in this game. Like, the, the TA can kill Roshan so early, the Gyrocopter fight so early, and offers so much more to the team fights than what a Morphling can possibly contribute. And friends had to play a very specific style. They need to play, like, full-on reactionary Dota to everything the complexity does. And even though they got some nice kills, we're seeing here, it's... it's no, already Jesse's kinda, okay. eating a lot of damage. That Soul Catcher, the Disruption, is doing a, a lot of work here. They will be able to take down the Tier 3. Rax is now going to be opened up. Limp begins to go to work on that while Swindles takes to the skies, hiding up over the edge on the side. Got nine seconds before that. Lasso is going to be back up once more. So they're looking to stall out a bit. Limp's going to eat the adaptive strike. Swindle goes in, forces out, and there's going to be a drop of the call down here. Aloha Dance wants to play, dives in, and that quickly replicates sick. back. Almost gets Limp down. That was actually sick. <laughs> that save. Preserving the Aegis for another day. I mean, that was, again, very little commitment. They didn't lose anything. So that, you know, Complexity walk away with another fairly sizable win. And we'll just have to continue to see what friends are going to do as far as far as just... I, I mean, to be honest, dude, I don't know what they can do. Both cores have BKBs. That means the Marana's influence in the team fights is going to be fairly negligible. And I, we kind of talked about it a little bit before. Just the difference in how you have to itemize it from a game-to-game -game basis makes a very big deal on heroes like TA. And his itemization, you know, he can just go a very set build and it's effective against everything that friends has. There's not a single hero with BKB that he's really scared of, except for maybe like getting Demonic first with a Soul Catcher on, and that's it. And as long as he has, you know, the False Promise back up at the Oracle, and or he has an Aegis in his inventory, then he's feeling very confident, and he can just take over the game like he normally does. It's just that this time they're putting him on heroes where him taking over the game directly translates into winning the game. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he just is used to being a bit more frisky early on, but more. Need to nurse him a bit. Aloha Dance will 
go back into some farm time here. But uh, as we know, his buildup is still pretty stunted as is. He has the Lincolns done, he's got the Yasha here, but still quite the journey ahead of him. And when you compare that to what complexity are already flexing on their side, as they are now coming into this bottom lane where the tier three is already down, they've already got the mid set of racks here. This could be a, 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 a second set if they are successful here, which they feel like they are. Limp jumps in two oh shots and God. takes down the Shadow Demon like he's nothing. And with that, Swindle makes his own move in. Got to get caught with the Fissure before he can get any sort of lasso play. So he's got to force himself out to safety. They give him the false promise he's going to be good. But he also gets the lasso off the G, pulls him back, takes him down. Limp with a double on that one. They take out one Rax, and now they move on in. They want the bigger target. They're looking to go for the more. Grave will keep him alive, but they stun him down. They get the pullback. They'll also get the cleanup on the Dazzle. That Morphling goes down, and that is the game. Friends have had enough, and we're going to be going to a game number three. Very impressive second game there from Complexity. Much more what I was expecting coming into the series. Yes. I will say that friends, you know, they played better than I was expecting in game one. This time around, it felt like Complexity were getting overran in the, the laning phase in the very early stages, and they were like, okay, let's take the foot off the gas for a little bit. We know our mid-game timing is going to be super strong. Let's play around that. Let's not play, you know, friends game or whatever. We'll just wait until Chessy is ready to fight. We go in with our call down. We get some really easy kills. You know, Swindles goes for the drums into the Blink Dagger, and... Honestly, after that happened, Aloha Dance 0-7.